Oh, hey, baby, the gear. Welcome back to Elkoi. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys a bunch of different money making methods so you can fill up your little virtual wallet. So I'm going to show you some beginner methods as well as ones for you experienced players. And to make this more realistic, I have created a fresh account. So the first money making method is voting. All you gotta do is type in colon colon vote and it'll open up a window. Once you have voted on all the sites, simply refresh the page and it'll give you a bunch of codes. Then type colon colon auth, then the code and click enter and you will get a shiny new vote book. Enter in all the codes until you've got six reward books. Now we are not opening these, we're actually going to be selling these at colon colon market. They give a little bit of money when open, but you get way more when you sell them and it's really a great boost for when you start the game. So simply go into the marketplace, check out the vote reward book, it'll be sold for around 5 to 6 mil. Sell ours for 5.8 mil, so they sell pretty quickly. Now while those are selling, I'll show you a couple other money making methods. Of course, this one's very obvious, stealing from the stalls right outside of the bank. So steal on the bananas until you're level 30, move over to the rings. Alright, once you've got a full inventory, simply come talk to this bandit leader and you can sell all of your goodies to him. And it looks like we made about 150k off that, which really isn't bad. Thieving isn't going to make you a ton of money, but it's the best thing for cash as you can sell it right away instead of having to wait for the trading post, like we're doing right now. Most skills will not make you much money, but there is a very easy one that will. Go to your skilling teleports and head over to agility and click on gnome agility course. Besides it being good to get agility up because your run energy does deplete in the wilderness, Every time you complete one of these courses, you will get an Agility Arena ticket, and these are worth 400k each. Alright, it looks like I completed one run in pretty much exactly 30 seconds. So doing this method will get you 800k an hour, as well as some Agility XP, which is very useful. Alright, so the last and probably best beginner money making method is Steel Plate Bodies. Now people need Steel Plate Bodies for Steel Titans, so there's a high demand for them. So if you come into the store, you can buy as many steel plate body box as possible. You can go right up here to the bank and deposit them in there and just rinse and repeat. Use up all of your money if you can. All right, so I spent about 20 mil on sets and that gave me exactly 500 of these. Now you've got to open them all up. Simply take them out and use them on the bench one at a time and it will give you all of the things that are inside. And it looks like we can actually bring six of them out here and just do this over and over again. All right, so we've got our 500 steel plate bodies, all of that together, buying them and uh, taking them out of the sets. Took about 15 minutes in total. So let's go ahead and sell these and see how much they are on the market. All right, so it looks like the smallest price is 140K and this guy's got a ton of them. So let's go ahead and sell all of them for 135K. Now we bought the sets for 40K each. That gives us a 95K profit on every single plate body. Multiply that by 500 plate bodies and we just made 47 mil in virtually 15 minutes. So if you had enough money to do this for an entire hour, you would literally make 200 mil in an hour. Of course, until you sell these, which is the catch because they will not sell right away. Alright, so now it is time for the higher level money making methods and almost all of these require combat. So that's something you're going to want to get up early, but all of these are pretty much the best money making methods in the game. The very first one we're going to take a look at is Wilderness Slayer. So if you come over here and talk to Curadel, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel my task. You can talk to her and get a Wilderness task with C49 Guard Bandits. Now sadly I didn't get any, I got really unlucky, but they actually drop PvP emblems. You'll usually get at least one or two usually uh, each task, which I almost always get. I got a little unlucky during this one though. But if you take your emblems and use them on Mandrith over here, it'll give you 8.5 mil and 20 Wilderness Slayer points. And if you're good at PKing, you use the emblem in your inventory, every single kill you get will double the price that you get from turning it in. And the Slayer points. Now another thing monsters in the wilderness drop are wilderness keys, however, there's a better way to farm them than just doing wilderness slayer. What you're going to want to do is just get one item, that's it, just one good melee weapon and you are going to run down below Edgeville. Now once you're here, simply kill these thugs or the chaos druids over there as well until you get either an orange or a red key. Alright, so once you get your orange or red key, you're of course going to want to pick it up and teleport over to your favorite boss to die with it. Yes, that is correct. That is why we only brought one item. Basically how it works is um, you can't get more than one key 
if you have one in your inventory or bank. However, if you die with the key and uh, it goes into death's inventory, then you can go and get as many as you want. That way you can use multiple keys at once. So what are these keys used for? Basically, you go into the wilderness and you spawn bosses with them. If you guys didn't see, I actually did a video, link will be in the description where I did this with 50 of these keys and I made about 200 mil an hour. Now the reason we're only getting orange or red keys is because they are the easiest to do while some of the other bosses can be quite tricky. And uh, all the low level monsters like Chaos Druids and the Thugs are the ones that drop the orange and red keys. So the two spots for the orange and red keys are right up here near the Ice Plateau Teleport. If you do happen to get other keys, I will link in the description uh, the forum post for the other ones. Now make sure you bring a spade. That is super important. You're going to need a spade for this. You're going to dig right here. It will skull you and then you're going to uh, fight the boss. It's nice and easy. So make sure that you don't bring anything too valuable because it did just skull me when I dug right there. That is something important to realize. Although if you have a pack yak, you can have winter storage scrolls. Use them on your good item and it'll send it to the bank. All right, looks like there's already a guy coming up up over here. Oh no, he's also gonna be doing this. Oh my God, the rune skimmy legend, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. Hey, you do rune too, right? Ah oh, shit. Ah, uh, shout out to Jordan651, a fucking legend. You gotta get yourself a dragon skimmy though, my man. Does I like watching your vids, man? Keep up the good work. Alright, so we're gonna get our drop right now. It's gonna go below us since our inventory is full. And as you can see, we got uh, we got a couple good items. We actually got 20 frass, fra frass dragon bones. By the way, this is the spot for the red key, just in case you didn't want to go into that forum. Now we're going to make our escape now. And uh, the main money makers from this are stuff like Frost Dragon Bones, as well as uh, it gives you armor pieces, stuff like Vestas. It'll also give you uh, Stadius Warhammers. Also, these uh, these gold leaves for construction, which cost 30 mil in the store. And this is the only other way to get them, so people can sell them for quite a bit. Now, Frost Dragon Bones are about 600k each, so just from that one boss right now, we made about 12 mil, just off these 20 Frost Dragon Bones. All right, so another decent money making method is Frost Dragons. You can go into your boss teleports, and it'll give you two options. There's frost dragons on the ice path and the ones in the wilderness. If you have 100 dungeoneering like I do, you could actually fight the ones on the ice path, meaning you will not actually be in the wilderness. And as you can see, there are quite a bit here. So the idea is pretty simple. Kill the frost dragons, take their bones, and go sell them on the market. Right now, they're about 600k each. All right, so I'm going to start a stopwatch and see how many of these I can kill in one minute. Alright, so it looks like I can kill about four of these in a minute. At 600k each bone, that comes out to about 2.4 mil per minute, but keep in mind, I do have some pretty good gear. I actually have some better gear and overloads, so I might even be able to make 3 mil, an hour, three mil per minute off of that. Alright, so another good money-making method is Barrows, and what you're going to want to bring is a good magic setup. I'm also using the Zero Staff, that way I can use the Miasmic Barrage. I'm bringing runes for that as well as Blood Barrage, because you can also fight them in multi, and I got my Steel Titan. So since we talked to this old man, eh, yeah, 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 give me the challenge. I accept the challenge, you fucking chump. Now I recommend overloading before you go in there, that way you're not all low health, you know, right when you're in here. Uh, it will start, it'll start in 50 seconds, so you have a little bit of time just to get used to the area. Oh, my overload has actually worn off, so let's go ahead and use that right now. Now be careful with what you bring in here, as uh, I have seen it been glitched before, where people lost items and they were not able to get them back, so just don't bring anything that you're too afraid to lose. I'm not, this stuff isn't too expensive. Alright, now it is starting, now you're going to want to put on the prayers that you want. I would say put on protect from melee, as there's like four different melee people. Alright, and now that they are here, right when you can, go straight up to the very northeast. You might want to click on your cerebrus a little bit, just just in case, just be careful, because there are a lot of them, and they're all coming at you and hitting you pretty high. So there we go. Uh, I've gotten out to the north, and basically the reason we came up here is because this area is not multi, and you can kill them one at a time. Now the trick to doing this is to basically lure up here and only kill Carol and Aram. That way all the people that are left are melee, and you can use your uh, blood barrage and basically hit them all at the same time. Well, the miasmic barrage. I think is this does the same thing actually. Oh yeah, it's multi-target. Okay, never mind. Don't bring blood brush. All right. Once you kill either Aram or Carol, put melee protection melee back on, just to be careful. And I go down here and try to get Aram up here as well. You can fly right back up here. He should follow you. Just kind of try to attack him. It's kind of tough. There we go. Okay, I got Aram. It's a little tricky. All right, we're 
on him. I'm gonna run to the back and stay on Aram. Hopefully, Aram will attack me. Okay, there we go. Now we are only in combat with Aram. So that's the trick. You kind of run out into multi, attack Aram, and then run back while he's attacking you. That way, uh, they can't steal the kill. All right, and once you kill Aram, make sure you put back on Protect from Melee. I would recommend healing up a little bit with your Cerebrus. And now you're gonna come out here. Now you gotta get them aggro again, possibly. Can be a little bit tricky because uh, for some reason you can't attack them when they're in single and you are in multi. Now, of course, the idea is to try to get them all on the same spot. I'll uh, use a Miasma Barrage and bada bing bada boom, look at that. Tons of hits, sending them all at the same time. It's gonna clear them out very quickly. Should be easy peasy. So once you get this down, you know, you can actually get these done pretty quickly and, uh,. Certain Barrels pieces are really expensive, like the Barrocks and Barracks and stuff like that. Just go down easy, man. Just go down easy. And there we go! And look at that, we actually just got a drop already, a Varric's Plate Skirt. I was hoping it would beat some Barrocks, but that wasn't that hard at all. It's good magic training, and I'm pretty sure you can also get uh, multiples as well. Alright, so Varric's Plate Skirt is about 10 mil, so that's not uh, bad at all. I'm guessing the, uh, the Carol's Top will be pretty expensive too. Yeah, 40 mil you can get from that. Alright, so the last money-making method I'm going to show you guys is making Steel Titan Pouches. Now to do this, you will need 99 summoning, you can also do Yak Pouches at 96 summoning, it makes less money, you go kill Yaks though and take their Yak Hides at the training teleports. But this one makes a lot more. Now of course you are going to need Crimson Charms. Now to get Crimson Charms fast, you can go to the Scaling Teleport, Summoning, and head over to Rock Lobsters. Alright, now it is a little crowded here, so let's go ahead and check out some giant rock crabs instead. Yeah, looks like these are a little bit less crowded. You just get basically a nice barrage spell, ice barrage, blood barrage. I'm using my asthma barrage because it's really strong. And uh, you just kill these guys. There's a shit ton of them, so as you can see, you can get them kind of all stacked under one part. And uh, the charming imp will speed this up quite a bit by picking up all of the charms for you. Alright, here we are back at Rock Lobsters. I do believe that the uh, the giant rock crabs drop a lot more blue charms, but we are going for a red charm, so try to get a spot over here instead. Alright, once you have some crimson charms, you're going to want to come over to the market and buy some steel plate bodies. You can also buy the sets and open them up yourself, but we're trying to make bigger money here, so we're going to buy them ourselves. So these are actually the ones we were selling ourselves, so that's pretty funny. So we're going to buy 17 of these. Now you're going to go down here to the summoning area, and simply make your pouches. Where are they right here? We are going to make all of them, that is 17 pouches. We spent about 2.3 mil on the uh, actual plate bodies, and it looks like they sell for about 500 to 600k, meaning for just 17 of these pouches we made 7 mil. So if you farm a bunch of Crimson Charms or get a bunch from Slayer over time anyways, you can use those and you get a few hundred charms, you could basically make about 200 mil uh, just off of those, and it doesn't take long at all because you could probably make all of these pouches in, you know, a matter of like 10 minutes. So guys, there you go. That is it for our money-making guide. There are a ton of players on Elkoi, so it is a little more competitive to make money on here. When you're just starting off, you're looking at a maximum of about a mil per minute that you can earn doing stuff like the uh, Agility Arena, thieving, and doing steel plate bodies. But once you start leveling up your combat, you can start doing things like Frost Dragons, Wilderness, Slayer Keys, and all of that good stuff. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If it helps you, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like. Subscribe to my channel if you want to be another one of my videos. Have a nice day.